So this is that pelican I bought this winter. I was showing you on the trap line and I told you how I was gonna modify the tongue and build a cross member across here. Cause I just got a feed bag across there to keep some of the snow. Which it works. But I want to build a cross member so I can walk down and I'll have another one this way. So I can walk off the snowmobile and into the skimmer for setting wolf traps. But anyways, I don't like this hitch. So this hitch is very wide to start with. And it just dangles in there on your uh, snowmobile hitch. A lot of guys use pintle hitches too, or pintle you know, style, I guess. And uh, yeah, sure, they work good. But my sled has already got the regular snowmobile hitch. And uh, I want to tighten this up, so I'm going to rebuild this. And uh, I might reuse the spring in this year, but I don't like the fact that this does not rotate. So it's loose on there right now. I got it loosened off, but it will not rotate. So you can't flip your skimmer. And if you roll your sled and then you put all the strain on your hitch here. So I like them so they, they can turn 360. So I'm going to eliminate this. And uh, these bolts here are long enough. You can see them extending here. So I'm going to go with a bit thicker steel here. And then bring it up a little. And uh, this tubing here is very light. So if you over tighten these bolts here, you can kink this material. So I got some light angle iron. that I'm going to cut little strips and put them on here. Just like a fish plate. And it will reinforce that and the piece that this here is slid into between these two square tubings uh, will be a bit heavier as well and I'll bring it up and this will pivot 360. So I'll kind of show you as I'm going here. So I cut that plate off the bottom here. I'm going to weld this one on. A bit heavier of a plate so it doesn't twist side to side. Not too big of a deal to build one, right? So, beef it up a little bit. And I cut uh, two of these angle irons. And then uh, the back of the spring here have those two points on them. I cut them off. I just need a backer for the spring. So I want this to rotate 360. So this is gonna be my new plate. And then this angle iron is gonna go on the side here for reinforcements. I already got one cut out here, or both of them cut out, sorry. And uh, so then I'll go like so, cover up the holes, and then this piece will go in the middle. And I might actually even lift it up a little in the back, just to give it that proper angle for the hitch, so that your hitch isn't always pointing down, so when you back up it just wants to buckle all the time, so it's nice to have your hitch nice and level. I can put them in the vise or even drill press and drill them out. I'll do the same for the other one. And then uh, that centerpiece as well. All my pieces are marked out. I'm just going to drill them. And then I can uh, bolt her up together. Perfect. So hopefully you can see, but I cut this two inch flat bar seven inches long and then I measured three and a half inches and then heated it up with the torch and bent it over and pounded it down near flat with just the right thickness for the hitch on my sled here. So it just sits snug right over top of it. And I don't have all that play. It's nice and snug. Yeah, so I'll be using the Expedition next fall if I don't get my other Scandic. I sold my other one. A really good sled. But this will do the trick.
thing that's handier on the drill press is these magnets. You just pull on the lever and it releases all the metal. Super handy for clean up. I'm going to put this little rope and pick up all the pieces of steel on the ground. Then when you pull that uh, cleans itself out. Handy little thing around the drill press. For the hitch itself, you will be welding that on here. And uh, then I'll cut these corners. Just, just cut the corners off and then grind it nice and round. It'll make for a nice hitch. Okay, so I got this Pelican uh, skimmer tongue improved. Just about done, just need a paint job, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, missing a bolt here. I, I didn't put, put any nuts on, I'm gonna pull it off here and show you kind of what I did. So, you guys seen what I did with the hitch here with the angle iron on top of this uh, original hitch here just to reinforce it. And then I uh, put a thicker plate here in the middle between the two square tubings and uh, same bolts lock nuts and I use that same spring and pin I just cut the uh, the little horns that were on that original uh, hitch here so now it can rotate 360 and that's what I like so if I want to dump my sled if I got bait or full of snow or whatever I don't have to unhook it and if I get into a train wreck where I flip the sled, I won't wreck my hitch. So, okay, so going back here, uh, I only got one bolt here, I gotta get another one. But I'll be putting two bolts here. I drilled through the square tubing. And then I got two at the back here. So this is three quarter inch plywood, you could put whatever, I just had this piece here. And the reason being is, uh, I like to walk across here and get into the skimmer for setting wolf traps. As you've probably seen in my other videos. And uh, the way the hitch is here, so I'm going to pull this off and I'll show you. Try and do this one handed here. I'm going to pull these bolts out. I'm going to be putting lock nuts on them. So I'm just going to remove this plywood here. And you can see how the hitch is built. It's got this bow where it goes in. Well, this area here, I covered it with plywood. And the reason being is just to eliminate more snow getting into the sleigh or the skimmer. And if I jackknife with the snowmobile, it's only going to come up to here anyways. Because this hitch is so far out. So this won't bother anything. So you can see the original drawing of this hitch underneath here. And then I extended it this much. Just a bit more surface area to eliminate any snow and... When I want to jump in the, the sleigh, it makes it not much easier. So another thing I added here is a cross member. So this is 1 8 angle, uh, 2 inch. So I'm going to pull these bolts out here. I drilled right through that 1 inch. So I modified the top here. So I cut it on an angle here. Just so it would follow this square tubing. Because I wanted the angle to be all the way down and snug here. So it's just one bolt all the way through. And uh, on this here, this is just inner tube. This quarter inch bolts, I put five of them and uh, we'll see how it lasts. But it's just a little bit of a skirt to deflect some more snow from getting into the sleigh. Make sure that nice walking area and a good deflector for the snow. There's that hitch, 360 degree, that plywood, so I can walk on into the skimmer. I might even put some like one inch uh, cross members on top, just little strips, just uh, when it fills with snow and ice and whatnot, just so it's better traction. And then that uh, piece of rubber across there, like I say, it's just inner tube. Uh, It'll flop around 
not the prettiest thing, but I think it'll uh, help with the snow getting into the skimmer quite a bit. Yep. So now she's a finished product. I added these two three quarter inch strips here. Just for a bit of traction. It gets pretty slick on there. And you jump off there, so. Yeah, overall it's not, adds, adds a bit of weight, but nothing excessive. So. Well, I never ended up doing too much water trapping. I was hoping to get some videos out, but up here in northern Alberta, we got fires all the way around us. We've been kind of fortunate where we are right now, but things could change pretty quick. I was hoping the trapping cabin hasn't burned down. But anyways, we can't uh, go around anywhere with quads or nothing, all kinds of restrictions because of that. Thought I'd take a bit of time and build some more Martin boxes. Why not? So I built them a little differently this time. I didn't bother going with the tapered box. I'm going to leave these out on my uh, new line. I mean, you could easily do these tapered if you wanted to. But uh, a bit quicker to build this way. So all these are cut to 12 inches, even the back one here. And uh, the side pieces are seven inches. And the bottom and top will be seven and a half inches wide. And the way I nail them together is this one here starts on top and it goes to the side of this one. That one starts on top here and it goes to the inside of this one here. And then this one here starts on top, goes to the inside of this one. So cutting all these pieces the same length, 12 inches, all I did for uh, nailing it against the tree for that little bit of lip there, I just uh, brought it down a little bit. So when it's on the tree, it, uh, it won't matter, right? And on the back here for the uh, mesh, I'm going to put uh, actual cut lids on here, but this mesh here is a uh, half inch and uh, I cut it six inches wide here. You might have to measure, like if you use this dimensions, you should be fine, but six inches and it just goes inside the box and I just staple it or use that air stapler and then stapled it on this side and then pushed it in and over the edge and then cut it. And then pulled it back a little and then stapled the rest of it so you got a nice little basket here so yeah i gotta put these lids on and i'll just have a little bit of a lip here just enough to nail it to the tree and uh yeah it gives that ni nice basket here And whatever's left between the two holes, if you get this right, you shouldn't have to cut anything if you get them close enough. But if you got a bit of distance there, I just cut a little bit out of the middle. Just enough for the, uh, just enough for the springs to get through. So what this uh, does is, you might have seen my previous boxes, how I built them. But this is how I hold the traps in place so they don't fall out. And by cutting this here, I cut pretty tight. And then uh, I kind of go out to the edge of the hole on both sides. So it's a little tapered. And then this little notch here will actually hold the spring in place. So I'll show you here, I'll throw a trap in here. I usually set it with my springs up. So you can do either up or down with these holes. And that little notch sits between the spring on each side. But uh, I put cameras on a lot of my boxes just to see what they're doing, right? And uh, lots of times they'll climb up the box and sit on top of the box when it's on a vertical like this here. So they'll come up on top of the box and sit on top and even sit down on the springs or even climb up using the spring. And they'll knock that trap out if it's not secured properly, especially Fisher. If you cut the uh, 12 inch pieces, then you get four uh, sections out of four by eight sheet. So it's just to maximize the amount of wood you have out of it, or 
amount of boxes you get out of a sheet, I guess. Just a single ferrule. I'm using 1 8 uh, components on the 332nd cable. So I'm out of a 1 8 cable and 332nd is big enough. But I got a whole bunch of these 1 8 components and when you flatten it on the uh, anvil, it makes for a, a bigger uh, catch for behind inside the box so it doesn't pull out. I mean you could put a washer if you had 330 seconds. So, again uh, this is 1 8 components but if you flatten them enough they work fine for this kind of stuff. It's just because I got so much 1 8 stuff from years of using those for wolf snares in the past. Cut that little tail off. I usually push my springs up to have the trigger on top. And then uh, that's all there is to it. And the guy that had the trap line before me, if you've seen my previous videos, he didn't have uh, these clips, but uh, he's using these here. Just a piece of nine gauge wire, twist it up. So if you just had the trap itself, you just grab your swivel that comes with the Belial's usually, and then you just slip it up and, and take it off. You just feed it through again. Very smart idea. Works good. I just have all those clips and as long as you don't wax them up or paint them, these clips, because uh, you got to verify that they work and they spring back. If you put wax or paint on them, sometimes they, they quit functioning. So, yeah, this uh, smart setup allows the uh, Whatever you get, Martin or Fisher, to hang in front of the box here, and you don't have to find branches and sticks to overhang the side so to the side so that uh, your trap dangles and doesn't rub up against the tree to minimize fur damage or pitch or whatnot. So for the top of these boxes, I uh, I just use some one-inch uh, ratchet straps or whatever. Some that are junk, I always keep some. Uh, you can use two inch as well or whichever size you have, but a couple of half inch screws and all there is to it. Kind of improvised on a few of them here where I was running out of plywood. Well, actually not running out, but I didn't want to waste all the trim. So I stapled this little strip and had these smaller pieces. So just the smaller doors, all it is. Just a good way to... Yeah, by offsetting the bottom here, about two inches, this one's about an inch and a half, but two inches is perfect. It gives you that lip to nail it against the tree. That one's a bit short, but it'll work. So, yeah. Good time of the year to build them. With all the fires that we've been having here, you can't roam around the trap line or nothing. You can't quad around, can't even go bear hunting. I guess you can if you're on foot, but no quadding. They frown on anybody cruising around in bush, even with trucks and jeeps. We're supposed to get a, rain, a bunch of rain here on the weekend or Monday anyway. Now hopefully that kind of settles it down. But yeah, you can see how hazy it is or smoky. I mean, like doomsday. <laughs> I just bought that trailer. I'm going to sell that other one I got. I got a big uh, skid steer car hauler type trailer, 20 foot by, I think it's seven. So you can't fit two quads side by each. 
And this one's quite a bit shorter and it's smaller axles. The other one's got 7K axles. These are 3,500 each and just plenty for what I'm doing. So I, this one here is a deck over is what they call it. And it's 14 plus the Vino is 16. And I could fit two quads with tub trailers side by each on it. And going this way, if I put quads, I can fit three definitely. I'll probably even get four on there. Well, I don't know if you get four, but. And then uh, same for snowmobiles. I can fit two sleds sideways and I won't be able to leave the skimmer on. It'll be too long, but I'll just put it sideways across there. Yeah, and we kind of spoiled ourselves this year. We, uh, the wife and I, we, with that new trap finders, a total different area and lots of roads and bigger area. So we kind of spoil ourselves and bought a side by side. So that'll be coming up shortly here. Yeah. All right, I'll keep going here and 